Hi there! I'm back with December's Treetop Twins book. And if you have been collecting these books uh, at McDonald's, you can take out the one called The Twins Pursue a Penguin, the one you get in December. And you can read with me or you can just listen to me. The snow gleamed and dazzled as the sun glinted off the ice. The treetop family have turned their time machine into a snowmobile and they have traveled not back in time but far far away to Antarctica to study the chin strap penguins. I don't know why you twins have brought the toboggans, said Professor Pablo. Because tobogganing is so much fun, said Ted. And even serious scientific professors like us need to find time for fun, said Professor Penelope. We're too busy to have fun today, said Professor Pablo firmly. I want to film the chinstrap penguins underwater. In the distance, they could see down the hill to the shore where the penguins were gathered. And they could hear them shrieking away on the edge of the water. Professor Pablo was heading for the snowmobile when Ted had a suggestion. We could toboggan down, he said. I think that's an excellent idea, said Professor Penelope. Then we get to do our work and have fun. So they loaded the equipment onto the toboggans, pointed them downhill and whoosh! The treetop family tobogganed down to the shoreline. Woohoo! shouted Professor Pablo as he shot down the hill. Down by the water, the chinstrap penguins were feeding their baby chicks. They're so sweet, said Tulip. The adult penguins looked as if they were wearing little old-fashioned motorcycle helmets with straps under their chins. And the chicks were gray and round and fluffy. Why are there always two chicks chasing after the bigger penguins? asked Aisha. That's because most chinstrap penguin families have twins, explained Professor Penelope. Just like us, said Tulip. The penguins were very clumsy on the ice, waddling from side to side or sliding on their tummies. And every time a parent chinstrap penguin waddled off and came back with food in its mouth, its two babies would run after it, both wanting to get fed first. It looks as if they're playing a game, said Alfie. We think they have these food races so the penguins can feed the babies separately and make sure each gets the same amount of food said Professor Pablo. Just then, one of the chinstrap penguins dived into the water, followed by another. Right, everyone, let's go, said Professor Pablo. And the treetop family got ready to film the penguins underwater. They put on their dry suits, which would keep them warm in the icy water, and waddled around as if they were chinstrap penguins themselves. And then they all dived in and swam after the penguins. Underneath the ice, the chinstrap penguins that had been so clumsy on land glided through the water elegantly. And they were quick too, more than three times faster than the fastest human swimmer. The portly little penguins flew underwater and it was the clumsy humans who couldn't keep up. It was a magical world under the ice and the treetop family filmed not only penguins,
but bright orange sponges, and octopuses, whose blue blood contained natural antifreeze, and seals, and orcas. And they filmed and filmed until they all got tired and decided it was time for dinner. Nighttime in Antarctica. Elephant seals lolled on the ice floes and a wandering albatross flew lazily overhead. The treetop twins were warming up around the campfire after their swim under the ice. Professor Pablo decided to help warm them up by pretending he was a parent chinstrap penguin and they were the baby chicks. He ran away with their supper and they had to run after him to get it back. It definitely made dinner time more interesting. The sun still shone overhead because in Antarctica in the summer, the sun never sets. So long after supper, the whole treetop family rode around on their toboggans until it was time for bed. Woohoo! shouted Professor Pablo as he whooshed down the slopes. He had forgotten how much fun tobogganing was. And even serious scientific professors need to find time for fun. And that's it for today's book. See you next time.